So the start of my entrepreneurial journey was actually selling perfumes. I had a supplier who was in Pretoria, I was here in Gauteng, Johannesburg, and I would call him up, go and collect, but as soon as I had a couple of orders. I used to advertise, I used to sell for, to colleagues, I used to sell in the streets, walking door to door, and it's those highly concentrated perfumes that actually don't cost an arm and a leg. So you'd actually get people that would order like four or five. It's a business that went on for like three, four months. It wasn't sustainable because some people would place orders when it came time to pay, they wouldn't pay, you'd sit with stock. And as someone who was new into business, I thought that it would be something quick, quick. I would actually get the money fast, uh, and actually see a lot of profits quickly. Gandhi, you have to get customers, you have to get return customers and a commodity or a product like perfumes, they don't actually get used up as quickly as ABC. You'd actually have to give it time before people will actually need perfumes again. So my model was actually not a good model. It works for other people, but it actually doesn't last much because people also want name brands that are known for quality, that are known to actually make an impression. And with your no name perfumes, especially when they are like duplicate perfumes where a smell resonates with an already existing popular perfume, but doesn't last quite as long, and the strength of it is not quite as strong. Some people want those name brand perfumes that are subtle, but immediately when you enter a room, it actually speaks to the people around you. So that was actually essentially one of my first failures, the perfume business that I actually tried running with my wife. What did we call it? I remember what we called it. It was part of Footy's Dress Up Divas. <laughs> and how that came about is that my wife actually started selling clothes. She used to stock up clothes because people were liking a lot of how she was dressing. She had a fashion sense and people appreciated the way she would actually dress. So based on that, she actually started selling clothes, selling her style, which is another business that failed. I used to assist her with that business and everything fell under that umbrella of Footy's Dress Up Divas because her name is Dom Foot. So we just took it Footy's Dress Up Divas and this was back in like 2013 or so. So every single idea that we thought about, we then put it under there. Then there was a time where we tried the business of um, delivering fruits and vegetables. We'd go to the market early morning and then come into our complex, knock, tell people that they can place their orders every Friday and then we'd go and buy those fruits and sell them at a cheaper rate because we'd get them straight from the market. That business also failed because we couldn't sustain just Fridays and it was also quite time consuming and we didn't have a proper vehicle for that particular business so it also didn't last long. Before we knew it, all three businesses under Footies Dress Up Divas had actually failed. All three businesses under Footies Dress Up Divas had actually failed. But it was good learning curves because we got to learn about business. We got to start balancing things. The biggest thing also was that we didn't manage our time accordingly because one had a child, we had work to do, and in Kamo we were distracted by these businesses. So when you fail in business, you also take the lessons with you. And those are the lessons that we took into future ventures at the end of the day. Then there was my failed Uber business. Wasn't a big business. What I simply did was enter one of the business cards into the Uber side of things. We followed the issue of the paperwork. We went through to the Department of Transport. We were trying to get the operating license for the vehicle, but we were allowed to actually drive whilst doing so. So the biggest mistake or the first mistake at the time is that we didn't go into that business in time. So we couldn't then register our business independently, our car independently. We had to go through a secondary service provider. It's a management agent of sorts. So they managed the car, they managed the driver, they brought in the driver, they interviewed the driver, they made sure that all the paperwork was intact, they asked for all the insurances from our side, and then they would get a particular weekly fee 
just like we would get a particular payment every week it went on the issue with that is that it wasn't consistent so there were good weeks and bad weeks and therefore some months you'd get 10,000 rand some months you'd get eight some months you'd get six but you'd still be owed the balance and the driver would have to catch up what that causes is that the driver would then stop altogether then they'd have to get a new driver then you lose income for those days while they're trying to get the new driver and while they're making sure that all his paperwork is intact and everything else it went on for a good two years then COVID happened and COVID was the ultimate decider in making it fail so even though it wasn't consistent in giving us income COVID was the great equalizer it made sure that the uber business fails there were people who had major fleets in uber and their businesses were torn apart because of COVID. and then i then retried uh, getting it in after COVID, but it wasn't a good thing in fact the returns were quite bad i tried getting my own driver the problem with that is that the car itself was in a bad state so the drivers what they do is that they don't take care of the cars they don't maintain the cars that stays your responsibility issues of insurance is your responsibility issues of um, servicing the car is your responsibility tires your responsibility windscreen repair your responsibility any accident management and the worst part of it all is that suddenly my car was two shades of white <laughs> it was two shades of white on the doors it was more cream and then on the bumper and every other area it was more white but the front lower bumper was also creamish so it's something that was also not reported to us as owners of the vehicle and therefore it worked to our detriment so that business failed because of COVID then I also tried thereafter to put it into the courier services to put it into Bolt to put it into InDrive and that failed because of the person whom was actually meant to operate that particular vehicle so the car is almost paid off now i'm just driving it like any of the other family cars that we have uh, just to keep it alive because because it's so paid off i don't want to sell it um, because it just brings in unexpected opportunities so even though it failed it still brought in some money it was still able to cover most of its expenses and i would only be out of pocket in certain months for that particular period so that's the uber failure journey guys You know what the quickest business failure was actually the quickest business failure that we ever endured was partnering with two different guys for two different entities partnering with two different guys for two different entities those businesses failed quick